Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. Summary from 4-Minute Books. Written by Marta Brzozko and read to you by Andy Mayes. One-sentence summary. Silent Spring is the story that sparked the global grassroots environmental movement in 1962, explaining how chemical pesticides work, what their drawbacks are, and how we can protect crops in better, more sustainable ways. Favorite quote from the author. In nature, nothing exists alone. Rachel Carson. Silent Spring is considered the book that started the global grassroots environmental movement. Released in 1962, it focuses on the negative effects of chemical pesticides that were, at the time, a large part of U.S. agriculture. Rachel Carson and her work began initiating a shift in global environmental consciousness. Carson was, by formal education, a marine biologist who also published a few best-selling books about the sea and ocean biospheres. Her work is said to have led to the creation of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, she was also posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Jimmy Carter. Silent Spring carries a message that is as relevant today as it was back in the 1960s. Humans are dependent on their living environment, and it is, therefore, pure madness to disregard this environment's protection. Because of the boldness and simplicity in how Carson articulates this truth, her book still inspires activists all around the world today. Here are three lessons I took away about the use of pesticides and environmental protection. 1. The main problem with pesticides is that they don't target pests exclusively. 2. DDT can harm people even without direct exposure. 3. To prevent the harmful effects of pesticides, we need more education and other environment-friendly ways to preserve crops. If you are all about making the world a better place and protecting nature, there is no time to waste. Let's go. Lesson 1. Pesticides destroy not just the particular pests, but whole ecosystems. Humanity inherited pesticides from World War II. During the war, scientists involved in chemical warfare discovered many substances with which to kill enemies. When the war ended, upon observation, those same substances were lethal not only to humans, but also to insects and some other agricultural pests. So at first, using chemicals seemed like a great way to protect crops. But since pesticides became more widely used, many studies were carried out which proved that most of the chemical substances had numerous destructive side effects. These effects are the main focus of Carson's book. The huge disadvantage of chemical pesticides is that they virtually never target unwanted pests selectively. Once they are distributed into the environment, they get easily transmitted through water, as well as passed on in the food chain. This causes a whole variety of species to ingest chemicals. This has far-fetched consequences, as it easily disrupts the delicate balance of whole ecosystems. In the end, pesticides usually create more problems than they solve. A perfect example of the dangers brought by mindless use of pesticides is the U.S. Forest Service's mass use of DDT for combating the spruce budworm in 1956. Spraying the pesticide over 885,000 acres of woodland, they ended up exterminating not just the spruce budworm, but also natural predators of the spider mite. As a consequence, the latter bred beyond control and became a worldwide pest in the following years quite a big price to pay for an inconsiderate use of some chemicals. Lesson 2. Once DDT enters the food chain, it affects all the species involved. Even if you don't care much about other living organisms on the planet, it would certainly be concerning to learn that pesticides found a way into your own body. But how is this possible, you may ask? If you are not a farmer or experience other forms of direct exposure to the chemicals, you may think that you are safe. Even if it's a big environmental problem, at least this doesn't affect your health, right? The problem is, this is not how it works. Pesticides, the deadly dangerous DDT in particular, transmit easily through the food chain. This means that even if you don't come in direct contact with the DDT, your body may still contain an amount that is potentially health or even life-threatening. For example, one group of people who never came in direct contact with DDT had between 5.3 and 7.4 particles of DDT per million in their system. This may not sound like a lot, but experiments have shown that even 5 particles per million may already cause liver cells to disintegrate. So how did this happen? 
Further investigation revealed that the DDT present in those people's bodies originated from alfalfa farms that used the pesticides for crop protection. That contaminated alfalfa was later fed to chickens, which laid eggs that still contained significant amounts of DDT. By eating the eggs, people in the study still ingested a dangerously high amount of the chemical. Now, before we get into lesson number three, I'd like to give a quick nod to Reading.fm, the amazing people behind the audio for this and all the other videos on our channel. Reading.fm is your personal blog radio where you can listen to your favorite articles and essays from around the web, narrated by real, human, professional voiceover artists. Use the link below to sign up for free and start listening to more summaries from 4-Minute Books as well as your favorite blogs right away. Okay, now let's dive into lesson number three. Lesson three. The two main solutions to the harmful effect of pesticides are education and biological alternatives to deal with pests. With all the information we possess about the harmful effects of pesticide use, we can't afford to behave as if we didn't know. We know a hell of a lot, and we've known it for more than 50 years, at least since Silent Spring was published. So how can we gradually walk away from the chemical crop protection? How do we make sure that we put enough attention and effort into preserving our natural environment? The answer Carson gives us is twofold education, and looking for less intrusive alternatives to deal with pests. The least each of us can do is to inform ourselves about not just the effects of using chemical pesticides, but also about the effect of human actions on the environment as a whole. Once you start digging into it, it becomes clear that spraying chemicals on farms is just one of the many human attempts to control nature. With the right education, we could give up the idea of controlling and instead start cooperating with nature. Then, Carson says, we should look into more environment-friendly ways of dealing with pests. We already know of such methods. We just need to make sure that we employ them. They include, for example, mass sterilization of pests or introducing specific parasites and predators that help control the pest populations. There are numerous innovative solutions at human disposal already. The important question, however, is will we decide to use them? Hey, this is Nick, the founder of 4-Minute Books, and I want to thank you so much for watching our video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel for more. You can also visit us at 4minutebooks.com for hundreds of free book summaries, each of which will make you smarter in 4 minutes or less. Thanks again, and always keep learning.